Yeah, when um, I hear like Hassan like won't go out and do a show with Tim Pool, it's like, bro, this guy's like one of the largest podcast people. I think he's got the largest alternative media podcast, I think, on the internet. I don't know if anybody's bigger than him. How are you not like flying out to do that show every two weeks? And Hassan could like, like Tim Pool is not like an intellectual adversary worth sweating about. Like Hassan would, would own him, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, and as much as like I don't like to say it, like Hassan's not an idiot. Like he's pretty smart. He's good debate wise. He can pick his battles rhetorically. Like he did really well when he debated Andrew Tate, right? And that's another thing where it's like, bro, you could have like you look like a giga chat. You could be talking to Andrew Tate probably every week or two on Aiden's stream if you're trying. Why are you so f- afraid of this confrontation? Like Hassan is I think Hassan is like as successful as he is, I think it's like a textbook case of like media failure where this guy could be like crushing it he's already doing obviously he's exceptionally successful in what he's doing but he could be doing so much more but he's in a way hassan is kind of like washed himself but he's just washed himself at a higher level you know yeah i mean he, he got as big as he could get and then he he, he cut he cut the cord right yeah. basically um or maybe he cut it before on the way up but he just felt he didn't he didn't need you anymore mm-hmm. um yeah no i mean but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't really call myself a leftist, but undoubtedly, if you want to speak from a leftist perspective in terms of like being advantageous, he has a lot going for him in terms of like, I feel like he's the only good looking leftist of all time. Yeah. Um, Which he should be capitalizing on way more. Yeah. Yeah. He should be, he should be like, like listen, thirst trap he, TikToks with political opinions. Like, yeah, there's like a million things like that that he could be doing. Yeah. Not just that. He should be like threatening to beat out of people like he at sure, the level he's why, at like, he wouldn't even be punished could you imagine like for all my success which i've had a ton of success could you imagine if he would have been the one running the uh gambit in these red pill spaces like yeah holy but uh if he fought sam hyde that would have been amazing or um, that yeah because then it would and it do dude how many times have they talked about like for him to actually box and beat up sam Hyde? it would just be an insane but Again, there's the the fear of failure. We'll keep these people from ever leaving their ponds. They just want to be the biggest fish. In That's their the ponds. thing, though. Like, mm-hmm. I honestly, you know, if you want if you want to talk like statistics, like I think if you put them next to each other, it's really funny to say Sam would win. But I think probably genetically, just like where they are in life, like Hassan's younger. Um, I think he. I don't think he's done any steroids, so his body probably has like you know, less wear on it. Maybe yeah, um, but I, I think. The one, the big thing though, is that like, I think, I think Hyde has spent like an okayish amount of time, I think, training boxing. And I think he Hassan, has, I think Hassan has literally zero combat experience or zero combat he, sports That's experience. true. But, mm-hmm. but if Hassan tried and really, really tried, it's not like a totally unwinnable thing. Like no, there's no, no. like, yeah, absolutely. I'd say it's 50, 50, if not yeah. 60, 40 in Hassan's favor, like he could win. Sure. But then you think about the calculus Hassan is doing in his head. Right? This is the same calculus I did when it came time to be a StarCraft pro gamer or a streamer. Hassan has a very easy gig. It's guaranteed success. Day in and day out, he's at the top of his game. Why would he start cutting away stream hours to put his time and psychological effort into something that's not a for sure thing? That's really scary, probably. It is scary, but it's just like, you know, once again, you gotta suffer a little bit in the short term to grow in the long term, you know? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you have that mindset. I have that mindset. I could never be like, I can't imagine staying at the same size for years and years for lack of trying, right? Like, especially when the whole world is at your fingertips. Bro, if you're Hassan, you the whole world is right there. Um, but he's just, yeah, he just does the same thing day in, day out. and doesn't even try even like the slightest. I don't know. Yeah. And I and that definitely works, like, undoubtedly in the short term. I mean, he became not only one of the biggest political streamers, one of the... Biggest was he in streamers. the top 10 of Twitch? Probably. It wouldn't surprise me if at one point... He might still be, yeah, top 10 viewer hours in Twitch, yeah. Yeah, one of the most subbed, I know that. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, long term, like, if you look at it over the course of, like, career length, like, his career will probably... At the, at the rate he's going, if he doesn't really change, mm-hmm. two to three years, like, he'll kind of be at the end of his life cycle, I think. Maybe four or five will be truly the, the bottom. Um, but for bit. someone like you, I think you have another, you know, 20 in you, 30 Absolutely in you. Absolutely um, true. 20. Depends on when I want to run for president or maybe governor, but I know what you mean, yeah. In which case, I'd probably cut back on my online content to manage my state or country, but yeah. yeah. He's in a very fortunate position, though, because he, like, what he does right now is, like, representative of, like, the sort of like the most convenient cultural opinion to have right yep. yeah so he's, he's in a like very like the safe edgy like he can but eventually that sort of like uh eye of like being convenient like it does pass with time like he's i think he's already peaked i think it's it's sort of passing a little bit and i think that yeah, like eventually he's going to be in a position where like he will have to you know really try to swim and really try to like 
he'll have to have conversations or he'll have to confront these things and these inconsistencies or he his channel will slowly die mm -hmm. um yeah he's already hit that he's already hit his like a uh, peak Hassan moment like his viewership has been sliding for about a year now but i don't know if he actually has it in him to seek out challenging content or not i don't know yeah there was a i feel like he might he might have it in him he's avoiding it as long as he can but back when he came up in your community he was because he had to to get bigger like because he, he had to you know network and grapple with other creators and have these conversations to, to grow his audience mm -hmm. back then he was having conversations with people right before the big blow up before the big twitch thing before he cut he cut you off right there yeah. was a point when he was having conversations and i mean was he the best no but he was willing to have them mm -hmm. um i think he, he had like, i feel like he, he's got the personality star where he's very content to be the biggest fish in his pond so, like, if you compare, like, Hassan will do everything he can to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow on Twitch. And like you said, he's probably hit his saturation point probably six to 12 months ago. He hit that saturation point, but he's not willing to, like, explore outside of Twitch. Like, my big growth this past year has been me. Like, every month I'm flying out to L.A., to London, to New York. I'm doing, like, different shows every single month because I'm willing to, like, branch out. And I think that's helped me a lot. But for some reason, I don't know why, Hassan seems just unwilling to explore that. I think he doesn't want to, he's afraid to overexpose himself and get caught in a situation where he has to try to defend a position or something and like actually really try. He likes to have the control of his, his own, his own audience. And, you know, he can ban dissenting opinion and whatever. And he can, I guess, ban your name in chat. I didn't even know he did that. Um, cause, uh, the thing is like when you, when you do go, the, go do these debates, um, you run the risk of getting something wrong or looking dumb and then that being clipped. And I think his worst case scenario, like probably the thing he has nightmares about is like LSF, which we already know that cause he, he hates LSF and he asked them, he's like, this isn't even drama. Take this down. Mm -hmm. Um, that, and I think the number one worst case scenario for him is like a bunch of TikToks about like a bad moment where he looks dumb and it's just like, it's somewhat taken out of context. So it's like even more uncharitable than like even how bad he, up yeah. i think that's his like worst case scenario like just overexposure like yeah, putting probably. a little skin in the game and then it gets it gets cut off and he's like you know he, he, i think he would probably have a mental breakdown if that happened mm -hmm. yeah um because at least for now the kind of response is like oh well maybe people do clip me but it's just it's just the chuddies you know it's just it's destiny's community it's this person's community and their opinion is invalid because of this other thing unironically but, he literally blames all negative feedback he gets on the internet on my community he'll say that if like a comment section is going poorly like he gets his fan base to like bombard every reddit thread like he's deleted some threads where like there'll be a thread on like tiktok cringe or something of him going viral and he'll literally watch it with a stream and be like guys we need to downvote this like get rid of this uh, and if he's getting negative feedback on the internet, he'll just like say like, oh, it's probably Destiny's community. Even if we're like, we don't actually engage with us on that much. Like over the past like six months, there, hasn't, there just hasn't been that much to talk about. Right. Um, so, but yeah, so it's funny how like deranged he is about that. Yeah. But the thing is like, eventually he will reach a point where like, if he doesn't engage, like he will, he'll lose everything except for that very small core audience. And I'd, I'd argue that amount of people is actually probably like increasingly smaller and smaller because those kind of like cultish things like they do burn bright and then they kind of fall off um, mm -hmm. quickly as well. Um, so I think in like two to three years, I think he'll be in a very different place than where he is now. Mm -hmm. um, even if you look at like his YouTube views and you look at the, like the views he's getting, they're not more than you. Like I think you get more views on YouTube than he does probably. I'm pretty sure um, I do now. If you combine all three of my channels, it's around 20 million a month. I don't know what, I don't know how many channels are his though. So it's hard to compare. Yeah. But given I his think audience he has, on Twitch, I'd expect it to be like three or four times my views, yeah. Right, yeah, because his audience on, like when you stream, you get like on a good day, like 10,000, 11,000 okay, live, On yeah. a good day, okay, 15 to 20,000, okay? Generally around okay. like five to 10,000, okay? But I know what you mean, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, corrected. Um, He gets like, what, 30 average? Around 20 to 30, yeah. Okay, but I think that is falling off, because I, I feel like I remember a time when it was like 50. Yeah. I was like, holy Plus, yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. the Amogus period for a lot of big Twitch streamers was like the COVID Amogus stuff was huge. Yeah, and I think that's uh, I think that's falling off. And you know, to your credit, I think that just even outside of like the way he engages with stuff, I think the content that you put out and engage in regularly is really topping anyone else in your space right now. Um, Absolutely. After all the with all the you know? yeah, well, just with like. I mean, you're right about the flying out stuff. Like, flying out to talk to these people definitely puts you in another camp. Because all these guys, you only ever see them in one room, mm -hmm. talking in one tone of voice, talking to the same three people, talking about the same five subjects.
I appreciate that, Destiny. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. 